for this video i'm going to be doing a tier list on the manga written by nobuyuki fukamoto fukamoto is one of my favorite manga artists i've read most of his works and they're some of my favorite manga i really enjoy fukamoto's unique art style and his stories that usually revolve around insane gambles i'm going to be ranking his manga in a tier list from s to f tier I have a space at the bottom for manga that I haven't read yet. If I haven't read it, it's due to not having any translations and I haven't been able to find it online. I only put his manga series in this list and left out any one-shots or compilations of one-shot chapters, so those won't be included in this video. So enough with the intro and let's get started. Alright, so first we've got Beriding Guy. This one's a pretty short manga. It's about this young man named Guy who is wrongfully accused of murder and he's sent to this prison that's run by a madman that abuses the prisoners and Guy has to find a way to clear his name and escape from prison. It's a pretty interesting manga, a little bit different than Fukumoto's typical manga about gambles, but it definitely has his signature style. It's fairly short and it's a pretty good read. I put it in B tier. It's solid, but it's not one of his absolute best. Next I've got Rude 39. This one's probably one of my least favorite. It's about this middle-aged man who lives a life that's kind of outside of society. He doesn't have a job and he just lives uh, in this really cheap apartment and survives off of playing pachinko. The story is mostly about him going around to different pachinko parlors and him finding ways to beat the machines and make a profit. It's a little more complicated than that with the characters he meets and stuff, but that's the main idea. I got it in D tier. I think it's one of Fukumoto's weakest. It's pretty short so it doesn't really develop any of the characters too much. It doesn't really have the high stakes or excitement of a lot of the other um, gambling manga that Fukumoto has done. And in my opinion, Pachinko just doesn't really make for a very exciting topic either. Next we have Kaiji Part 1. This one is an easy S. Kaiji is probably Fukumoto's most well known and probably also his best work. The Kaiji anime or manga are definitely the number one starting point for someone who is new to Fukumoto's works. If you aren't familiar it's basically about this young man who's kind of lazes around through life and is a bit of a loser. He ends up getting tricked into signing like this contract I think he like co-signs for someone's loan and he finds himself in debt and he starts getting harassed by a debt collector. The debt collector ends up like threatening his family a little bit like saying he was going to go after his parents and or his sister or something like that. And since Kaiji is not able to pay the debt, he gives him the option to come to this event that they're holding that will give him a chance to pay off his debt and maybe even leave with a nice profit. So he shows up and it's an event held on this cruise ship where they play this card game that's based around uh, rock, paper, scissors. The people who win are able to make enough money to pay off their debts and the loser are actually forced to be taken to like this underground camp to do like hard labor to pay off their debt. It's a really enjoyable series. Kaiji despite being what society would consider someone who's like a loser is actually really talented and smart when it comes to gambles especially when the pressure is highest. So it's really enjoyable to see him be able to figure things out and find a way to overcome adversity and win in these gambles and the series really captures everything that's great about Fukumoto's works so if you have not seen or read any of his uh, his works this is definitely the number one starting point and next we got Kaiji part 2 this one's pretty good uh, I want to put it quite on the level of the first part the first part features the rock paper scissors game that I talked about as well as a couple other games that he plays after. Part 2 starts on a part where I try not to get into spoilers but he ends up in that labor camp that the losers go to due to like a later gamble that he, he does and ends up losing. So he's in the labor camp and he, he has to try to find his way out of the labor camp. In that labor camp they have a way that you can purchase a one day ticket out where you can leave the camp and go out into regular society and live like a normal day. It's, it's about him basically getting the money to get out of the camp and then once he gets out he does a gamble to try to win his freedom as well as his fellow prisoners freedom and it focuses around this giant pachinko machine that he has to try to beat called the bog. It really has a satisfying payoff but it's it kind of drags more than the first part which has a 
more gambles and it's more fast paced where the the bog part kind of drags on a bit so that's why it's on a lower tier but it's still really good uh, part three i also got on a tier Part 3 is about another gamble that Kaiji, try not to get into spoilers for the last two parts, but I guess I could say that it's about a gamble that he does after he gets out of the labor camp, and he gets into another gamble where the odds are stacked against him. It's a game based around Mahjong, but it's like a two-player Mahjong, and it's, it's a pretty interesting uh, game with a lot of cool strategies. It's a pretty enjoyable part. It's not as like varied as the first part, so I don't have it quite on that level, but it's a really entertaining part for sure. Now we got Kaiji Part 4. This one I got a little bit lower. I got to put this one on B tier. Part 4 introduces the son of the president of the company that, that Kaiji is gambling against. The president of the company of Tei Corporation, Hyodo, is the one that kind of put together these crazy gambles, having them compete in these life or death gambles, basically for his entertainment. So Kaiji wants to gamble against him and take him down and defeat him in a gamble. So in this part, he's going to try to gamble against his son and defeat his son in a gamble. Uh, part 4 actually doesn't uh, feature Kaiji in a gamble in particular. It's about um, Kaiji and the son, whose name is Kazuya, watching and observing this game that Kazuya put on for his entertainment, where these three in immigrants play this life or death game for a large sum of money. So this part really is just mostly introducing Kazuya's character and setting up the gamble between Kaiji and Kazuya in the next part. And that part I'm going to give an A. It's a really satisfying battle. It's a high stakes life or death gamble and it's extremely satisfying and one of Kaiji's best moments. The entire series is really great, but that one is, um, it's not quite on the first parts level, but it, it's pretty close. I would say it's, I'll put it in A, but it's like borderline S. And now the most recent part, part 6, I'm gonna put it in B. This one still isn't finished at the time of making this video. It's about Tei Corporation and trying to hunt down Kaiji and two of the, the contestants in Kazuya's game from part 4 who have a large sum of money that they won in the gambles and they're trying to run and, and escape with this large sum of money. So it's basically them running away and trying to strategize on how they're going to escape. I'll put it in B tier because it's pretty entertaining but it feels like it's been kind of dragging on a bit. It's It's been going on for a while and it's it's been pretty entertaining but it's not as exciting as um, a lot of the gambles that are in the other parts, but it's pretty good. Alright, this one is Atsuize Pinchan. This one is just okay. I'll put it in C. It's about this careless, free-spirited young man who, more than anything, loves to play Mahjong. He's pretty bad at it and he usually almost always loses, but he loves playing more than anything, so he's constantly trying to find any chance he can to play. The story basically focuses on him going around and playing Mahjong against his characters and he kind of wins them over through his like positive, free spirit. Um, it's okay, it's pretty short though, so it doesn't really get too developed. So it's not bad, but it's definitely not one of Fukumoto's stronger works. This one is uh, Shinjitsu no Otoko, or um, The Truthful Man. I haven't read this one. This one doesn't have any English translations that I could find, so I haven't read this one yet. So it's going to have to go in the, uh, the haven't read category. It seems pretty short. It's only a volume long, so usually those aren't Fukumoto's best works when they're the short one, two volume manga. They usually don't have enough time to really develop the characters and get real interesting, so those usually aren't his best anyway. So this one is Jin to Kin. This one's an earlier work of Fukumoto. It's, I'll put it in B. Early on, it was pretty good. It's about this young man named Tetsuo, who meets this man named Jin, who has a lot of power in like the underworld and kind of shady dealings. He's involved in like a lot of like gambles and illegal dealings. Um, he meets Tetsuo and becomes kind of interested in him and decides to test him through several events. Um, some of them that are like pretty interesting, like life or death gambles again and he kind of tests him in order to see if he's someone who can become his sort of successor. Jin holds like a lot of power and influence in a lot of areas so so if Tetsuo becomes his successor it would bring him a lot of wealth. There's some pretty good gambles in this one that's pretty interesting. I enjoyed it for a while. Somewhere towards like two-thirds of the way through there's this event where Tetsuo who's like a really nice guy becomes kind of disillusioned with the things that Jin's doing and 
feels like the things he's doing are not really morally right, so he steps away. And then once that happens, the series actually continues on for several more volumes where Jin does like this big gamble where he makes like a ridiculous sum of money. But the series becomes way less interesting without Tetsuo. Jin is kind of like um, a proto Akagi where he's just like a genius and you know he's going to succeed. Tetsuo was a little more grounded. He, he was a little more relatable. So I felt like the series was better focusing on Tetsuo as a main character rather than Jin. But it kind of dragged it down. I'll still have it on b tier i'd probably borderline b and c though next we got akagi i'm gonna put it on a this one's probably close to s i don't want to give out s too easily though Akagi's one of fukumoto's most iconic characters if not his most iconic character it's about this fearless genius young man named akagi who discovers he has a real talent for mahjong so he plays a lot of underground mahjong games usually against like yakuza as like a representative player for for yakuza groups and just basically playing mahjong and high stakes gambles he's completely fearless and doesn't fear death so he's like the perfect person to do these high stake gambles and he's basically like this unbeatable mahjong player the series really hits its stride once he gets into this life or death mahjong game against a this eccentric rich guy named washizu iwao washizu is one of japan's wealthiest businessmen but in his old age he's kind of gone kind of crazy and now tries to get excitement through life or death gambles in this gamble he they play a type of mahjong where it's basically just regular mahjong except certain tiles are see-through which adds like another layer of strategy to it washizu will bet his wealth and akagi will gamble using an amount of his blood so every time he lo loses a hand and he points are taken from him blood is drawn out of him it Akagi's one of Fukumoto's best characters, as is Washizu. It's really interesting. It's almost an S tier for me. Actually, I should probably put it in an S, but it, it's it's right on the borderline. The thing that keeps it from being the absolute top tier, though, is that it does really kind of drag on a bit. In real time, the one Mahjong match against Washizu lasts about 20 years. It's so long that that manga actually just finished a couple years ago. Fukumoto actually wrote several manga during that time before Akagi finished, and even finished the sequel to Akagi, uh, which is the next one here, 10. He even finished a sequel which deals with the end of Akagi's life, finished that manga before finishing the Mahjong match against Washizu. That's probably what holds it back for me. Next I have 10. I'm gonna put 10 in S tier. I honestly didn't really care for the first several volumes where the series focuses on the character 10. I really didn't care much for his character. Um, he was okay, but I didn't like him that much. I didn't think the series was that interesting. Early on, it focuses on him. He's kind of portrayed as like this like good guy, but his his thing is that he like cheats at mahjong and wins by cheating better than anyone else. The series really gets good when Akagi comes in. Later on, they have like this big mahjong tournament featuring the best players in Japan. It's the best players from the western part of Japan versus the best players in the eastern part of Japan. The main characters, Ten and um, a college student named Hiroyuki, gets involved with Ten after he loses a, a Mahjong match to him. End up getting dragged into this match. And Akagi is one of the players on that team. So that Mahjong tournament's a really great arc. It's one of the best in any of Fukumoto's works. So that, that really elevates it and then the part that really takes us to the next level is after that tournament, there's this time skip where it deals with the end of Akagi's life. And for the next 30 seconds or so, I'm going to go into spoiler territory a bit, but I really can't talk about why this one's S tier without going into spoilers. But it, go, it deals with the end of Akagi's life, and it takes place several years after the East vs. West Mahjong tournament, and Akagi ends up getting this early onset Alzheimer's disease that is like rapidly deteriorating his mind, and he's losing his memory, and he's not able to do the things that he loved, like play Mahjong. And before he dies, he invites all the participants in the East vs. West Mahjong tournament to kind of have one last meeting with them and say goodbye. And it's just a really well done, really touching. And they deal with it really well. It's probably that it's probably my favorite part of anything in Fukumoto's work. So that's why this gets an S tier from me, because that part is is really good. It's the last like two volumes. 
Next here is um, one I haven't finished yet, but I've read about half of it. I'm gonna put it in B tier. It's called Hero. And this one isn't written by Fukumoto and it's not drawn by him, but he's involved, I think, in some level with the writing and the plot. It focuses on Hiroyuki and basically after the end of 10, where Akagi is, has died, he basically is taking it on himself to change the way he lives. Because that's a lot of the theme in, in 10 was Hiroyuki going about life and doing the things that are expected of him, like going to college and trying to get a good job. And he does that and he ends up living a successful but unfulfilling life. And he sees the way that Akagi lived, is moved by that. So it's basically about him taking on Akagi's mantle and living the way Akagi did. And it's pretty good. He's a really likable character. He's pretty likable. He's a pretty smart guy, but he's not like the absolute genius on the level of Akagi where he just seems like almost untouchable. So he's pretty relatable. So I like him as a character. I'm going to give it a B. This one here is um, written by Fukumoto, but not drawn by Fukumoto, but it's called Confession. It's a short story about two men who are stranded on a mountain in a blizzard. They believe that they're going to die. One of the men confesses that he killed a woman, the girlfriend of the other man. He confesses this, believing that they're going to die, but then they end up finding a cabin on the mountain and are now able to survive. Things are not quite what they seem with the events surrounding her death. It's a pretty interesting psychological story where this confession weighs on them and influences their actions. I won't get into spoilers on this one, but it's pretty good. I'd say it's worth reading because it's pretty short. Next, we have another one written by Fukumoto, but not drawn by Fukumoto. And this one is Seizon Life. I'm gonna put in a B. It's pretty solid. This one's pretty different than a typical Fukumoto manga. It's about an old man whose daughter had disappeared years ago. He was like an obsessed workaholic who ended up kind of neglecting his family in pursuit of success in his career. His wife ended up dying of cancer, I believe. And this ended up leading to an event where his daughter ran away from home after an argument with him and she ended up disappearing so so years later after him losing his family his wife dying to cancer and his daughter disappearing he realizes like the errors of his ways that he should have spent more time with his family and the things he did with his career really didn't matter so he's completely depressed and he's just about to end it all so he goes home and he's about to do it but before he does he sees that he has a message on his his answering machine so he plays the message and it's a call from the police saying that they found a body that they think is his daughter's this now spurs him to go find out what happened to her and who did this to her and bring the person who did this to her to justice he has a limited time to do it because the statute of limitations is coming up soon so he doesn't have much time to find out so he goes off and it's like a murder mystery trying to find out what happened to his daughter and it's pretty well done it's not amazing but it's it's pretty solid and it's not too long it's another one that's pretty solid and i would recommend giving it a try next we've got washizu this one also, like Hero, is not exactly written by Fukumoto, but it has Fukumoto's influence and, and even some events that happen in this manga are referenced in Akagi. And it's pretty good. Um, it gives a lot more depth to Washizu's character. He's a really interesting character and it gives a lot more depth to Washizu's character rather than just being like this crazy old rich guy and shows what like a remarkable person he was in his time and makes Washizu even more likable. Um, when he's first introduced in Akagi he seems like just this evil crazy rich guy but he ends up becoming kind of charismatic and likable as things go on and this kind of contributes to it so I, I like the manga I'm gonna put it as a B. This one's a Washizu sequel to the spinoff. Um, I haven't read this one. This one's not translated. This one is uh, middle manager Tonagawa. It's a spinoff manga that focuses on Tonagawa, who is a Tai manager who is in charge of setting up these gambles for the debtors. He's a character that Kaiji has his first big one-on-one -on -one gamble with in the first part of Kaiji. It's actually not written by Fukumoto, but I've heard it has like input from Fukumoto. And I didn't think this one was going to be good at all. I actually didn't even read it at first. I thought it was like just a dumb joke. But when the anime aired, I was like, I'll just try it out. And it ended up being something that I look forward to every week. 
I thought it was really funny. It has a lot of callbacks and references to stuff that happened in Kaiji. Just pretty humorous. Um, it gives a lot more character to Tonegawa as well as the Teai black suits that are basically the henchmen of Teai Corporation. It's really charming. I, I love its humor. It's, it's just a lot of fun. I'll put it in B tier but it's probably close to A tier to me. I just can't really put it on the same tier as Akagi. Um, if you're a fan of Kaiji, I would recommend it for sure. The entire manga isn't translated, but there is an anime that adapts a good portion of it, so it's definitely worth checking out the anime if you're a fan of Kaiji. So this next one is um, written by the same guy who does the Tonegawa manga. It's not translated and I haven't read enough of it to really make a good judgment on it. it it's got really similar humor to the Tonegawa manga, but it's not quite as good, mainly due to me just not really liking the character as much. This one is about the boss of the dice game from the underground debtor's prison in Kaiji Part 2. It's about him using his winnings from the dice game to buy that one day pass to get out of the debtor's prison and enjoy life. It's got a pretty good humor um, from what I've seen. I haven't seen enough so I'm gonna put it in the haven't read but it's probably B to C tier. I don't really care for the character as much as I do Tonegawa and the black suits but it's alright. This is another one I haven't read. This one I haven't read at all though. This one is about Ichijo from Kaiji Part 2, the manager that's in charge of the bog pachinko machine. It's not translated and I haven't read any of it, but if it's like the Tonegawa manga, it's probably pretty good, but it's gonna have to go on haven't read. And one more manga for the haven't read tier um, is the Nakane spinoff. This one is about Nakane from Strongest Man Kurosawa, which I'll get to soon. It's another like spin-off manga about a side character. This one I don't actually have much knowledge about because I haven't read any of it at all, and it's pretty new. So next we have Gin Yanma. This one's a really short manga. It's about a man who's a police detective, but in his free time plays underground mahjong games against usually like Yakuza bosses and stuff like that. Pretty standard for Fukumoto manga, but it's pretty short and it doesn't really develop the characters too much um, just due to not really having much length. He's basically like a brilliant genius Mahjong player who takes on crooked people in Mahjong to kind of bring justice to them. But it's really short. I'm going to put it in C tier. Um, it's kind of standard Fukumoto, but it's really not too developed because it's just so short. Um, so it's just got to go in C tier. And this is the last one for the no translations, haven't read tier, but it's uh, Yamima no Mamiya. This is Fukumoto's most recent manga. It hasn't been translated at all, but it looks pretty interesting. It's another Mahjong manga. It focuses for the first time on a female main character, which is something that hasn't happened yet in a Fukumoto manga. I have high hopes for it, but I have yet to read it at this time, and there's no translations, unfortunately, but I'm looking forward to it. So next we got Gambling Emperor Zero. This one's pretty interesting. There are two parts out so far. It's yet another series where it's about a genius young man in life or death gambles. The thing that makes this series so interesting is the gambles are totally different than the type of gambles that you see in the other Fukumoto manga. It's an extremely fun series because the gambles are extremely crazy. In this one, the gambles are more wild and are like life or death games that are not really like the games in other Fukumoto manga. Like most of the Fukumoto manga have games based around Mahjong or around a card game, but this series has a wide variety of games that are really interesting. I'm gonna put it as A tier for both parts. Borderline S, especially on part one. This one definitely doesn't get boring. I'm really looking forward to the third part too for this. It's been a while since the second part ended so I hope that Fukumoto gets back on this one and finishes the story up because it's one of his best. And last on the list is going to be Strongest Man Kurosawa. For the first part of Kurosawa, it's going to S tier. This is one of the greatest manga ever written in my opinion. This one is different from other Fukumoto manga in that there's no gambles, but what you do get is really great writing and really good life lessons. The story is about a man named Kurosawa who lived his whole life without really experiencing anything. He's never been in love, he doesn't have any kids, I think he's in his 40s at the point in this story. 
and he begins to despair that you know he's never you know experienced any of these things and he's never really felt like happiness he has no friends he works like a dead-end job in construction where the younger people get promoted above him and everyone kind of looks down on him as kind of an outcast through a strange series of events he ends up getting a reputation that he is extremely strong in a fight though he ends up getting attacked by some high school thugs who try to beat him up for laughs he ends up fighting back and it sets off a series of events where they try to get revenge on him and they end up sending um the aforementioned Nakane to fight him and and through a series of misunderstandings and him strategizing to make himself more successful in these fights, he ends up kind of gaining respect of his co-workers and respect of Nakane eventually through them thinking that he's like extremely strong. This eventually culminates in him witnessing a group of homeless elderly people in a park being harassed by a biker gang. The biker gang plans on beating the homeless people and running them out of the park and Kurosawa decides to put his newfound skills in planning for fights and help the homeless people fight back against the biker gang. This series was really incredible. It's really unique. I haven't seen any any kind of media that's really like it. It's really great to see Kurosawa's growth th as a character throughout the series. And the ending is just really incredible. As a really satisfying ending. If it would have ended there, it would have been perfect. I really don't want to spoil any of the ending. But I kind of have to go into spoilers a little bit for talking about the next part of Strongest Man Kurosawa. If you're not interested in being spoiled, just skip like 10 seconds. At the end of the first part, it appears as if Kurosawa successfully drives off the biker gang, but dies from the injuries he takes during the fight. Part 2 basically shows that he actually didn't die, but has now awoken from a coma. So part two takes place like five years later after he wakes up. So I really hated the idea of having a second part because the first part seemed to end so perfectly. Another frustrating thing is that in part two, I feel like Kurosawa's character is kind of reset. He loses so much of the growth that he had in the first part. So I'm going to put in a C tier. I don't think this was necessary at all to make a second part. I know a lot of people feel that way. It isn't horrible. There's some pretty interesting parts in there and it has its moments, but unfortunately I can't help but feel like it undid a lot of the progress that was made in the first part and kind of devalued the ending of part one. So for that I'm going to put in a C, but it's probably close to a B. I would put it like borderline B and C. That brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Um, it would really mean a lot to me. So thanks for watching and until next time, bye.